Okay, so in this video, um, we're looking at acylation. Um, in the AQA um, spec, uh, it basically splits um, the carboxylic acids and derivatives uh, unit into two parts, um, the carboxylic acids and esters, and um, then um, acylation. So um, uh, acylation is going to introduce us to two more derivatives uh, of carboxylic acids. So uh, already with our title here, we've got uh, three terms that we haven't met before or we're unfamiliar with. So we've got this term acylation, which is obviously the name of the topic. Um, we've got acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides. So these are going to be uh, the two deriv derivatives that we're going to meet. Um, so first of all, we need to understand what we even mean by an acyl group. So an acyl group is um, an, a carbonyl group with an R attached to it and then um, and then another group or atom attached to it. So um, we're looking at this here, the RCO is the acyl group. Um, and so when we're talking about acylation, we're talking about um, substituting a hydrogen atom um, with that uh, acyl group, with that RCO. Um, and um, in this particular unit, particular unit, we're gonna use uh, two types of compounds um, to achieve that. So there are gonna be two main types of acylating agents in this unit, and they are unsurprisingly um, what we have at the top here, acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides. So let's have a look at acyl chlorides first. Um, so they're, they're essentially just like a carboxylic acid, but instead of having the OH group, they've got a chlorine instead. Um, this actually makes them more reactive. Um, chlorines are very good leaving groups. Um, if we were to write the condensed formula, um, you can see, look, we've got that acyl, uh, the RCO is the acyl part there, and then the chlorine, uh, making it a chloride here at the end. If we look at a concrete example, um, so we, the R group is a methyl group and we look at how to call it. Well, it's two carbons uh, in um, present in this um, structure, one in the carbonyl, one in the methyl group. That makes it F. Um, the rest of the compound is um, saturated, so it's ethan. Uh, and then the way then we recognize or show that it's an acyl chloride is the oil chloride at the end there. So that's how we would recognize that there was an acyl chloride just from the name. Acid anhydrides are a little bit um, more unusual. Um, so they are, they are a sort of unfamiliar sort of structure. Um, so um, we've got um, two acyl groups linked essentially by an oxygen. And if you think about it, one way to approach this is it's, it's as if uh, two carboxylic acids have come together and uh, an H2O or water has been removed, uh, hence the anhydride at the top here. Um, the way of um, showing the formula, well, it, it, so in this structure I've drawn here, R, R, C, R is supposed to be equivalent. It doesn't, it, it's not necessarily the case that uh, an acid anhydride has to have um, the same R groups, um, but at A level um, they will be. Um, so uh, that's how we can have the acyl group in brackets because we've got two of them because we know R is the same and then the oxygen that links them is just outside those brackets. So this is something to practice or you know to sort of test yourself on regularly because it's quite easy to forget about the structure of an acid anhydride, to forget about how to do the condensed formula and people then often get stuck when it comes to actual questions. So 90% of the time um, that you do any A-level questions, if there's an acid anhydride um, in, the, in the question, um, it will be um, ethanoic anhydride. Where, so here with the R group is just a CH3 group. Um, so you can see it's, uh, you can see the acyl group is, uh, each, each of them is two carbons, uh, hence it's eth. Um, like I said, 90% of the time it's ethanoic anhydride. I have seen um, propanoic anhydride um, once or twice. Um, so the only difference uh, would be that um, we would have CH3, CH2 attached to each carbonyl, um, but it would be CH3, CH2 at both ends. And we would be writing this, uh, the condensed formula is CH3, CH2, CO, and then subscript two like that with the brackets around it. Uh, and from a name, the way we recognize it's an acid anhydride uh, is the oic anhydride at the end um, there. So we'll look at, uh, first of all, with um, sort of, I guess, the most basic uh, reaction. Um, so hydrolysis reaction. So we're just reacting the acyl chloride, an acyl chloride with water and an acid anhydride with water. Um, 
the overall reaction is very similar, but um, what we find with acyl chlorides is that we get a very vigorous, a very violent reaction. Um, acyl chlorides are really very reactive. You have to be very, very careful uh, about keeping them in a container where um, you know, water can get to them um, because it's incredibly exothermic. This reaction is very exothermic. We can see it says liquid boils, uh, but not only that, um, but one of the products is hydrogen chloride gas, um, which is obviously very dangerous. And if you remember your group, when you did group seven, um, there were, um, when you did um, the reducing power of halide ions, um, you could have got, uh, you could have had hydrogen chloride produced or hydrogen halide produced. And one way of um, recognizing that um, is that you get misty white fumes. So this is, this is quite, um, this is an important point here actually, because there have been questions in the past uh, where they've given you a molecular formula which has an oxygen and has a chlorine. And um, it could be an acyl chloride, um, but it could equally be that the oxygen and the chlorine are completely independent of each other. And one possible way that they can give you a clue as to which of those two options it is, uh, is to mention how, um, when it was, uh, when whatever that compound was, when, when it was added to water, whether it did or didn't uh, produce whist, misty white fumes. So if it did, you would know that the, um, the the oxygen and the chlorine were together and it was an acyl chloride. And if it didn't, you would know that the oxygen and the chlorine were separate from each other. So in effect, we had a haloalkane and maybe a ketone or aldehyde, um, depending on whereabouts the oxygen was. Um, acid anhydrides um, also produce the carboxylic so carboxy acid with water. And in fact, it just uh, produces uh, two uh, carboxylic acids, or it's a sort of one to two ratio. Um, it's a much less vigorous reaction. It's a much safer reaction. And, uh, and it's important to recognize those, those two differences there. Um, so with acylation, um, what we, well, let's just read what it says here, actually, because it's a slightly different way of looking at, at, at something that we've, we've done before. So saying like a halo alkanes, um, acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides um, are important in synthesis, fine, yeah. So just as our HAL, or basically our halo alkane, is used to an, attach an alkyl group to a nucleophile, and that's not probably the way we've thought about it. When we've done nucleophilic substitution, we've been focusing on uh, substituting the halogen with the, with the nucleophile, but we can think of it as attaching an alkyl group, the R group, to the nucleophile. Um, and so the principle is the same with our acyl chloride. We're essentially attaching an acyl group to our nucleophile. So the nucleophiles that were that feature in acylation are, are essentially, or many of them, many of them, we don't do exactly the same or all of the same ones, um, but uh, many of them are very similar to when we do nucleophilic substitution. So this is going to be a nucleophilic uh, reaction. Okay, so there is a mechanism for us to learn towards the end, and already we we can be aware of the fact that it's going to be a nucleophilic uh, mechanism. So we can use um, acyl chlorides or acid anhydrides um, if we react them with alcohols. We can use them to make esters. Uh, so it's one way of making esters. Um, so uh, one difference between this and a carboxylic acid is that we get um, the reaction go to completion. And we don't have an equilibria here, um, but other than that, um, the you know the ester that we would make would be the same. So if this was ethanoic acid, we would be still be making ethyl ethanoate. But of course, uh, one of the differences that and this is an elimination reaction. And if you remember when we mentioned elimination um, in the esters part, we said it wasn't. Uh, sorry, it's a condensation reaction. Um, uh, we well it is also elimination it's a condensation reaction um it's the, about the removal of a small molecule so in this case uh, the small molecule that's being removed is uh, hydrogen chloride and just as with the hydrolysis reaction in this reaction we would get misty white fumes so this is a common feature of acyl chlorides the misty white fumes it's something that's going to give us a piece of evidence that it was an acyl chloride that we uh, used in this reaction uh, if it was an acid anhydride um, just just used a different alcohol um so but it's exactly the same um so the so we're making the same ester whether we use the carboxylic acid the acid anhydride or the acyl chloride um you know assuming it's the same number of carbons that assuming say in this example they were all f 
Um, but the difference, of course, is what the, um, the second product is. So with a carboxylic acid, it's water. With an acyl chloride, it's hydrogen chloride. And with an acid anhydride, it's um, carboxylic acid. Um, so, yeah, but you can also see that this goes to completion too. So that's another thing to just bear in mind. Uh, we can also uh, react acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides with ammonia or primary amines to make an amide. Um, so um, there's a little bit of getting ahead of ourselves here. But um, first of all, let's just focus on what a, an amide is. So an amide is where we have this carbonyl um, attached to a nitrogen. So if any of you do biology, you'll recognize this as a peptide uh, bond or a peptide linkage. Um, and that's, so they're essentially amides. Um, uh, so we're just recognizing it with the CON. Um, this H could be an R group uh, and this R dash could be an H. It doesn't really matter. Um, but what's important is the carbonyl and the nitrogen are linked together. That's what makes this an amide. And that's how we would write um, the uh, condensed formulae. Uh, we will look at amides much more when we do um, condensation polymers. So I don't want to get too hung up with the amides. And something else that we're still yet to do um, are amines. But um, really all an amine is, is ammonia in which the, one, of, one or more of the hydrogens is replaced by an alkyl group. Okay, the, the reactions are exactly the same. So if I, I've got two um, examples here. So got an acyl chloride with ammonia uh, we're making our amide here um, and then we've got ammonium chloride as another product and um, so we make sure that we have two ammonias to make this um, balance um, in terms of naming that amide um, we never get anything too complicated at a, le a level so it's going to be uh, however many carbons it is ethan and then amide at the end so ethanamide here okay in this example and so that's if we're making ammonia it's pretty straightforward um it's just going to be um the number of carbons and then ethan so ethan amide okay ethan amide uh here we've got uh, a primary amine um so uh you can see what all it is is that uh, with our ammonia it was nh3 uh and with our primary amine it's nh2 at the end so one of the h's of ammonia is now an, is essentially is an alkyl group in this example it's uh ethyl so this would be called ethylamine but we will do amines as a separate topic so don't worry too much about it so it's ethylamine um so our acyl chloride is reacting um with ethylamine notice that we're getting our salt at the end here um, so that's why we needed two of the um, amines. Okay, the name again, very, very rarely comes up and it is something that we'll look at in greater detail um, at another point. But essentially, um, there is no difference. Well, where, where the amide um, linkage is, where the CON is, we would name that part of it as we would have named it if it was just ammonia. So it's two carbons, so it's a thanamide. And then we look at what else we look at what's attached to the nitrogen and it's going to be an ethyl group attached to the nitrogen. And you might see um, this doesn't really come up very much in AQA, but you might see um, on the Internet and so on. You might see N sometimes used. Uh, so N dash ethyl. So what that is making absolutely clear uh, is that the ethyl is attached to the nitrogen. All right. So that's really what that N is spelling out. Um, but I don't want the focus of this video really to be the name um, yet just yet. That's something that we can look at at a later date, but it's just at least to prepare you and make you aware because we are making uh, an amide using an acyl chloride here. And then just to have an example just to show uh, with an acid anhydride. Um, so we've just got uh, um, ethanoic anhydride with ammonia. So just comparing it with the one right at the top, we are making the same product, ethanamide, and the only difference is the salt. Okay, so we got ammonium chloride um, with the acyl chloride, but we get ammonium ethanoate. Um, and just notice again, well, like we did when we did uh, the salts of carboxylic acids, we've got the carboxylate ion and then the um, cation. All right. So um, you can see that we were making the same um, 
types of compounds with acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides. So there is, a, you know, there is a, a, a thing here where we might have a choice between them. So um, why might we choose one more than the other? Um, so the re this is a sort of question uh, that can get asked um, in exam questions, normally one or two marks. And um, the advantage, at least industrially, would be to use acid anhydrides rather than acyl chlorides. And so we have to consider what the advantages are. So why would it be better or why could it be better to use an acid anhydride? Well, they're cheaper. Okay, that's not obvious, but that's just a, a fact. Uh, they're less corrosive. So one of the things that we've you know, seen when we saw the hydrolysis um, reaction was that um, acyl chlorides are very, very reactive uh, compounds, much more so than acid anhydrides. Um, so that makes acid anhydrides also less dangerous to use. Um, uh, obviously, the other thing that the other product that we got was toxic HCl fumes, uh, hydrogen chloride fumes. So um, there's a safety issue there. So the less dangerous and results in an easier to control reaction are very um, well. They're similar, but also the, the HCl also fits in with the less dangerous to use. Uh, they undergo hydrolysis less readily. So actually, what that means is they are easier to store. I guess is the way of thinking about that. So you the, you have to take less care um, over storing them, um, and so yeah. So you have to just bear in mind. Um, you have to learn, and maybe two or two or three of these. Um, you could get an exam question. Why might you use an acid anhydride instead of an acyl chloride, or which one would you use, and why? All right, so um, sort of final part of this is it's not a very big unit, this acylation. It's, uh, it has introduced quite a lot of new stuff. It's introduced these two uh, types of compounds, acyl chlorides and acid anhydrides. It's introduced their structures. Uh, it's introduced, um, at least in this, at the moment, for the moment, amides, although they will reappear. Um, we've had to just appreciate a few differences in the, in the sort of vigor of the reaction uh, between acid uh, anhydrides and acyl chlorides. But it's also a new mechanism. So earlier we made that comparison uh, with haloalkanes, and um, we recognised that, or hopefully we got from that that there was we were going to have a nucleophilic uh, mechanism, um, and um, it's called, or the mechanism that we're going to do now is called a nucleophilic, and then it's addition elimination. All right, so it's it's sort of like two parts. There's going to be an addition, and then there's going to be an elimination. So if we think, if we start with uh, making an amide, so we're just going to do a reaction with ammonia. Um, so I've just got uh, ethanol chloride and I've got ammonia. So I've just got my two compounds ready. Um, remember, you must always draw the lone pair of electrons. Um, remember, any arrows that you draw in a mechanism must must be either from a lone pair of electrons or from a bond, right? Cannot originate anywhere else. Um, and then the first part of this mechanism, uh, that nucleophilic addition should um, sort of uh, give us a, a, recall, a clue there that it's going to be, um, the first part of it is, is exactly the same as what happens uh, when it's a, an aldehyde or a ketone, and you've got a nucleophilic uh, addition there. So um, the carbon of the carbonyl is delta positive, so the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen of our nucleophile here of the ammonia um, attacks the carbon of the carbonyl, and then um, the pi, uh, the pair of electrons and the pi bond move on to the oxygen. So this very first stage is exactly the same as the nucleophilic addition mechanism with aldehydes and ketones. And so we get, um, well, we never used ammonia in that particular mechanism, but we have this intermediate here. So this is um, the result of those first two arrows. So very important things to remember. Uh, you've got this minus charge, you've got uh, the positive charge. Um, we would have, uh, we have got a lone pair of electrons here. I've, I've just covered them slightly for the, because of the next arrow, but we have got a lone pair. You must show a lone pair of electrons on this oxygen, but given that you would be drawing the arrow as well anyway. So the first arrow uh, is again, well, sorry, is, is different. So this is where we depart from um, the aldehydes, ketones, nucleophilic addition mechanism. So here now we're undergoing the elimination. So uh, the pair of electrons that were on the oxygen move back onto the, um, move back between the carbon and the oxygen to reform the carbonyl bond. 
and at the same time um, the chlorine leaves so that's our elimination so we get uh, we've now got this structure here so we, we've we've re returned back to our carbonyl we've lost the chlorine but we still have this so this is uh, very similar to when we did uh, nucleophilic substitution and we used um, ammonia we ended up with um, our positively charged nitrogen towards the end so a second ammonia molecule removes a hydrogen or moves an H plus and moves a hydrogen ion because this pair of electrons in this hydrogen nitrogen bond move on to back onto the nitrogen to give us back our lone pair and we end up with our product. Let's look at um, another example. This time we're going to react an alcohol with our acyl chloride and that's going to make, a, uh, make an ester. Uh, so starting with our acyl chloride and our alcohol, um, our lone pair of electrons, it's nucleophilic, don't forget. So we're going to need, um, we, this is our nucleophile now, our alcohol is our nucleophile. So our lone pair of electrons attack our delta positive carbon. The pi electrons move on to the oxygen. Um, so we get our intermediate structure. Um, so notice the similarity. Um, so we've got um, we've got an oxygen with one one more bond than it should have, just like we had nitrogen with one more bond than it should have. Hence, we've got a positive charge on those atoms. Uh, and notice that our oxygen that was um, in a carbonyl um, or was double bonded to the carbon has now got a minus charge on it. And so we've done the addition. This is the result of the addition. So this um, species is the result of the addition. And now we do the elimination. So uh, the pair of electrons uh, the, on the oxygen move back um, to between the oxygen and carbon to, to get our carbonyl back and the chlorine leaves. And so uh, again, we've got our, um, uh, we've got a sort of a positively charged um, almost final structure there. And then we've got to remove our H plus um, so what I would say is actually just thinking about this is that if we were looking at a mark scheme in an exam, um, this part here, so the ammonia, uh, would be in brackets. So that would not be part, this arrow, this arrow here with the ammonia from the second ammonia would not be part of the mark scheme and the same here. And in fact, I just wouldn't include it. Okay, I wouldn't include it. It's, uh, the reason I've got it here is that it makes sense with the overall reaction. If we were giving the overall equation, we would need to show uh, the salt at the end. Um, so there is our ester. Now, one thing I want you to re recognize is that these are, this really is exactly the same mechanism. I could uh, rub that ammonia out and put my alcohol um, and I would be doing exactly the same, except I would just be changing the uh, the bit that's attached, the bit that's added, but the mechanism is exactly the same. I'm just writing the same mechanism again and again. Uh, just do um, the hydrolysis, so with water um, to make the carboxylic acid. So th this genuinely is exactly the same as the um, alcohol um, to make an ester because all I've done is I've rubbed out the CH3 and put an H, but everything else therefore is the same. So every time I add CH3 before, I've put an H. So lone pair of electrons on the oxygen attacks the delta positive carbon. Uh, the pi electrons move on to the uh, oxygen. Um, we get our intermediate, um, which has got a minus and a positive charge. So the addition's taken place. Now we do the elimination. So uh, the pair of electrons move back uh, between the oxygen and carbon to reform our carbonyl and the chlorine leaves. Uh, and we get then our almost final um, structure. So we've still got that positive charge on the oxygen because it's got three instead of two bonds. So we remove an H plus ion. So uh, this is the key bit, right? It's a, it's a pair of electrons in an oxygen hydrogen um, bond moving onto the oxygen and then giving us our products. And then to finish, I'm just gonna show you the same mechanism but with an acid anhydride um, now, uh, the, the specification does say that you only need to know nucleophilic addition elimination with an acyl chloride. 
but I'm just going to show you it with an um, acid anhydride to just illustrate the point again that it is fundamentally the same. It is exactly the same. So I'm doing the same reaction, hydrolysis. Um, so our um, nucleophile, our water molecule, is attacking the delta positive carbon. Uh, pi electrons move on to the oxygen. We get our intermediate with a minus and positive charge. And then we have our elimination. So a uh, pair of electrons on the um, oxygen move back between that it and the carbon to reform the carbonyl. And this time, you can see that the leaving group, instead of being a Cl, is, um, well, in effect, a carboxylate ion. So that's our, that's our leaving group. And then... Saying exactly the same, removal of an H plus ion, uh, electrons go back onto the oxygen and we now have our two carboxylic acid molecules. And so that's acylation. Um, it's not a very big part, but it is the part with the mechanism. So it's a, it's a new mechanism for you to have learned. It's also two new um, homologous series to have learned, the acyl chlorides and the uh, acid anhydrides. Acid anhydrides are easy to get tr to trip up on because you don't practice them so much so please try and test yourself on those regularly and and then the only other thing really is the um the fact that we're making amides for the first time uh, but they will feature in um, when we look at uh, uh, condensation polymers uh and uh and then we just have to remember the um advantages of using acid anhydrides over acyl chlorides in uh, an industrial setting um but yeah, if you have any questions about anything else to do with this, just let me know.